black tie, black tie, occasionally known in the English-speaking world by its French name Cravat Noir, is a dress code for evening events and social functions derived from British and American costume conventions of the 19th century. For men, the principal elements of black tie are a white dress shirt with a black bow tie, an evening waistcoat or cummerbund, and a dinner jacket. For women, an evening gown or other fashionable evening attire may be worn. Traditionally worn only for events after 6 p.m., black tie is less formal than white tie but more formal than informal or business dress. It may be worn to private and public dinners, balls, and parties. For men, the elements of black tie are Women's dress for black tie occasions has varied greatly through the years, traditionally it was. Today a lady's dress for black tie occasions covers a much wider level of formality ranging from just below the white tie standard to something more informal such as a little black dress. Specifically it can also include. Unlike the men's standard, the specifics of black tie for women are linked to whatever evening wear is currently in fashion. The first record of a dinner jacket is an 1865 record in the ledger of Henry Poole and Company, of an order placed by the Prince of Wales and future King Edward VII for a short midnight blue jacket. In the following decades of the Victorian era, the dinner jacket came into fashion as a less formal alternative for the tailcoat which men of the upper classes wore every evening. Thus it was worn with the standard accompaniments for the evening tailcoat at the time, matching trousers, white or black waistcoat, white bow tie, white detachable wing collar formal shirt and black formal shoes. Lapels were often faced or edged in silk or satin in varying widths. Dinner jackets were considered from the first less formal than full dress and etiquette guides declared it inappropriate for wear in mixed company. During the Edwardian era, the practice of wearing a black waistcoat and black bow tie with a dinner jacket became the convention, establishing the basis of current black tie and white tie dress codes. The dinner jacket was also increasingly accepted at less formal evening occasions such as warm weather gatherings or intimate dinners with friends. After World War I, the dinner jacket became de facto evening wear, while the evening tailcoat was limited to extremely formal or ceremonial occasions. During this interwar period, double breasted jackets, turned down collar shirts, and cummerbunds became popular for black tie evenings, as did white and colored jackets in warm weather. In the decades following World War II, Black tie became special occasion attire rather than standard evening wear. In the 1950s, colored and pattern jackets, cummerbunds and bow ties and narrow lapels became very popular. The 1960s and 1970s saw the color palette move from muted to bright day glow and pastel, as well as ruffled placket shirts as lapels got wider and piping was revived. The 1980s and 1990s saw a return to nostalgic styles, with black jackets and trousers again becoming nearly universal. The 21st century has seen increased variation and a relaxation of previous strict standards. Midnight blue once again became popular and lapel facings were sometimes reduced to wide edging. Traditionally, black tie was considered informal. In the 21st century black tie is often referred to as being semi-formal. Unlike white tie, which is very strictly regulated, black tie ensembles can display more variation. In brief, the traditional components for men are the original and most formal model of dinner jacket is the single-breasted model. The typical black tie jacket is single-breasted with one button only, with jetted pockets and is a black or midnight blue, usually of wool or a wool mohair, or wool polyester blend, although other materials, especially silk, are seen. Although other materials are used, the most appropriate and traditional for the dinner jacket are wool barathea or superfine herringbone. Double-breasted models are less common, but considered equally appropriate. Dinner jackets were commonly ventless before World War I, but today come ventless, with side vents, or with center vents. The ventless style is considered more formal, whilst the center vent is the least formal. The lapels are usually faced with silk and either a grain or a satin weave, but can also be silk bare at the adot. According to the black tie guide, the peaked lapel and shawl collar are equally authentic and correct. The buttons should be covered in similarly colored material to the main part of the jacket which would ideally be either self-faced or covered with the same material as the lapels. Some higher-end single-breasted jackets, both new and vintage, tend to be fastened with a link front closure which is visually similar to a cuff link. This method of closure is still common in the United Kingdom. The double B's and jetted hip pocket is the only style understated enough to complement the dinner jacket. Flat pockets are not considered appropriate for formal attires refine minimalism due to their busier and bulkier design and are simply an attempt by tuxedo manufacturers to save money by using standard suit patterns. B 
Herpes and welts can be of self-fabric or trimmed with a lapel silk facing, though classic menswear scholar Nicholas Anton Giovanni suggests that for the English these latter touch is a sure sign of hired clothes. The dinner jacket should also have a welt breast pocket to hold a pocket handkerchief, which should generally be self-faced rather than covered with silk. Emily Post, a resident of Tuxedo Park, New York, stated in 1909 that, tuxedos, can have lapels or be shawl-shaped, in either case they are to have facings off silk, satin or grain. She later republished this statement in her 1922 book Etiquette, adding that only single-breasted jackets are appropriately called tuxedos. There is a fashion movement suggesting that a man's appearance when wearing the wider and higher peak lapel is superior to the narrower notch lapel. White dinner jackets are often worn in warm climates. They are ivory in color rather than pure white, and have self faced lapels rather than silk faced lapels. They are generally worn with the same types of shirts and accessories as black dinner jackets, though the turn down collar and cummerbund prefer to the wing collar or waistcoat. Similarly, the shawl lapel is more common in white dinner jackets. In the United Kingdom, the 20th century etiquette was that white dinner jackets are never worn, even on the hottest day of summer, but are reserved for wear abroad. Today, white dinner jackets are frequently seen at weddings, formal beach events, and high school proms, in the United States and at some concerts in the United Kingdom. In tropical climates, such as in Imperial Burma, desert fawn was historically used as the less formal color. At one time, the mess jacket was also an option in warmer climates. It is generally considered inappropriate for a man to remove his jacket during a formal social event, but when hot weather and humidity dictate, the ranking man may give men permission by noticeably taking off his jacket. In anticipated hot weather, red sea rake is specified in the invitation, although this dress is esoteric in civilian circles, and is particular to certain expatriate communities. Traditionally, the only neckwear appropriate is the black bow tie that is a self-tie and should always match the lapel facing of the dinner jacket and braiding off the trouser seams. The bow tie is tied using a common shoelace knot, which is also called the bow knot for that reason. Often, members of wedding parties wear pastel bow ties with their dinner suits. This is inappropriate in a black tie context because it dilutes the formal integrity of the outfit, thereby reducing it to a party costume. Black tie trousers traditionally have no cuffs or belt loops. The outer seams are usually decorated with a single braid of silk or a material that matches or complements the lapel facing. Traditionally, braces, hidden by the waistcoat, are used to support the trousers. Belts should not ever be worn with black tie trousers. Evening trousers can be flat fronted or pleated today. Pleats first coming into fashion in the 1930s. Whilst flat fronted trousers are more fashionable at present, Pleated trousers may be considered more comfortable by men who have wider hips and a narrow waist. A waist covering should generally be worn as part of a black tie ensemble. Either a low-cut waistcoat or cummerbund may be worn, but never both at the same time. Although the English authority de Brett's consider that wearing a waistcoat is smart, they no longer consider either waist covering to be essential. The American authority, the Emily Post Institute considers them to be an essential component of proper black tie attire. Waist coverings shouldn't be matched to wedding theme colors. A low-cut waistcoat should be worn when wearing a single-breasted coat. The waistcoat plays an important part in black tie's refined minimalism by helping to conceal its working parts by discreetly covering the trousers exposed waistband and the shirt bosom's bottom edge. Waistcoats come in the V or rarer U shape, in backless or fully backed versions, double or single-breasted with or without lapels. Single-breasted styles typically have three buttons, and double-breasted ones three or four rows. Before World War II, while black tie was still gaining acceptance, men would wear a white waistcoat, along with other details now associated primarily with white tie, such as stiff-fronted shirts. However, this style, though increasingly viewed as an affectation, is still acceptable in the United States. The waistcoat should be made from either the same fabric as the dinner jacket or the same silk as the jacket's lapels. When a waistcoat has lapels, they should be faced in the same silk as toes of the jacket, in this case it is considered more refined if the body is made from the same fabric as the jacket. The buttons may be self-faced or covered in the same silk as the lapels. Vintage waistcoats were sometimes closed with studs made from onyx or mother of pearl, which were often surrounded by a setting of silver or gold. A waistcoat is never worn with a double-breasted jacket. Since this style of jacket is never unbuttoned, the waist of the trousers is never exposed, and therefore does not need to be covered, though before World War II an edge of waistcoat was often shown between the jacket and shirt. 
waist. A cummerbund may be worn with a dinner jacket in lieu of a waistcoat and, although it is considered slightly less formal, it is equally correct. It looks especially well with a shawl collar dinner jacket but may be worn in conjunction with pea pels. The material of the cummerbund should be silk satin, grain, or barathea to match that of the bow tie. It features upward facing folds, which were originally used to store theater or opera tickets, and are now considered to be more decorative than functional. Just like the waistcoat, cummerbunds are not worn with a double breasted jacket. As the cummerbund is seen as an extension of the trousers, traditionally it should the same color, i.e., be black. However, the black tie guide endorses deep and rich colors as a tasteful way to introduce some color into an outfit that is otherwise monochromatic. Bright colors, such as those often worn by members off wedding parties, should be avoided and the bow tie must remain black in any case. Some higher quality models feature a hidden pocket and an elastic loop toe fastened to the trousers. Shirts designed to be worn with black tie are called formal shirts, or tuxedo shirts in American English and dress shirts in British English. Traditionally, the shirt is white, has a bibbed front that is either marcella or pleated, a turned down collar, and double cuffs. In the early 20th century, a peak shirt with a detachable wing collar and single cuffs such as is worn with white tie was used, and in the 1960s and 1970s ruffled bibs were popular, but neither styles are often seen today. The wing collar originally disappeared in black tie after the 1920s when the appropriately semi-formal attached turn-down collar shirt became preferred, but it has been popular with American men in a less substantial, attached form since the 1980s. However, Many style authorities argue that the wing collar should remain the domain of white tie for aesthetic reasons. Etiquette Maven Miss Manners is one of those who feel that while the bow tie's uncovered band is fine in a white on white scheme, gentlemen with their black ties exposed all around their necks look silly. Although some style authorities consider the wing collar to be an acceptable option for black tie shirts, they should not be worn with double cuffs or a pleated bib, and are better suited to the more formal single-breasted peak lapel jacket. They should feature a bib that is either marcella or starched and include stiff single cuffs, made of the same fabric as the bib. This type of shirt is exactly the same as one worn with white tie attire. The collar in this case should be tall and stiff, which may be attached or detachable. When a full dress shirt is worn in this fashion, it should be accompanied by the white Marcella waistcoat ordinarily associated with white tie. Wearing white tie accessories in this manner is considered by many to be an affectation. Debrets do not endorse the wing collar as being compatible with the black tie dress code. The more formal Marcella version of the shirt fastens with matching shirt studs. These are most commonly in silver or gold settings, featuring onyx or mother of pearl. Various geometrical shapes are worn, for example, circles, octagons, or rectangles. There has been no consistent fashion preference for gold or silver, but studs with mother of pearl are more formal and therefore often associated with whitey. The soft front pleated version of the shirt should be fastened with mother of pearl buttons, typically supplied with the shirt on a separate strip of fabric. Alternatively, a fly front shirt, appropriate with both the marcella and pleated bibs, conceals the placket for a more minimalistic look. There are several types of cufflinks that may be worn with black tie. The most formal and decorative are the double panel type, which dress both sides of the cuff and are connected by a chain or link of metal. This model conceals the mechanism by which the cuff is secured. The most common, and least decorative, are the swivel bar type. Whilst these are acceptable, they leave the inner side of the cuffs and mechanism exposed which is incongruous with formal dress. The most formal and traditional shoes are patent leather upper pumps decorated with grain bows. The more popular alternative currently is the black lace up Oxford shoe, in patent leather or calfskin, with a rounded plain toe. Broking or any other decorative pattern should never be seen on black tie footwear. Matte finish pumps are also seen. Shoes are almost invariably black and patent leather is considered more formal than matte finishes while pumps are considered more formal than lace ups. Generally considered too informal for black tie are shoes with open lacing, such as the derby shoe. Notable alternatives include the black button boot and the monogrammed Albert slipper, which was originally worn on Liot Home. The black Gucci loafer in leather is also considered as an alternative, especially in urban British settings. Hosiery is black socks made from fine wool or silk. Most etiquette and fashion guides of the current decade recommend keeping color touches and favoring a single color, usually dark, muted reds, such as maroon, are a traditional choice. Handkerchief, a handkerchief in linen, silk, or cotton is usually worn in the breast pocket. Although precedents for tasteful exceptions exist, pocket squares are normally white, 
and should not match the waist covering or bow tie. Boutonniere, a flower may be worn. Red and white carnation, blue cornflower, and rosebud have all been popular at times. In France, the boutonniere is usually a gardenia. Outerwear, black tie events do not involve outerwear and coats and gloves are no longer considered part of the dress code. However, etiquette for what to wear in public and transit to and from black tie occasions was stiffer in earlier eras and remain an option. Matching overcoats are usually black, charcoal, or dark blue, and traditionally of the Chesterfield style. A guard's coat was also once popular, and a lighter top coat can be worn in summer. Historically, an Inverness coat was also worn. Until the mid-20th century, gloves and scarves were always worn, and are still occasionally seen in grey leather and white silk, respectively. White kid gloves have never been standard with black tie, remaining exclusive to white tie dress. Hat, the 20th century standard hat for black tie was a black Homburg in winter, or straw boater in spring and summer. Fedoras were originally regarded as too informal but have become more common recently. Top hats were originally worn with black tie but had been reserved to white tie and morning dress from World War I. Black tie dress does not require a hat today. Decorations and orders, military, civil, and organizational decorations are usually worn only to full dress events, generally of formal governmental or diplomatic significance. Miniature orders and awards are typically worn on the left lapel of the jacket, and neck badges, breast stars, and sashes are worn according to country-specific or organizational regulations. Unlike in white tie, where decorations are always permitted, the dress code will usually give some indication when decorations are to be worn with black tie. Timepiece Traditionally visible timepieces are not worn with formal evening dress, because timekeeping is not supposed to be considered a priority. Pocket watches are acceptable. Black tie is worn to private and public dinners, balls, and parties. At the more formal end of the social spectrum, it has to a large extent replace the more formal white tie. The black tie coat is sometimes classified as semi-formal in contrast to the formal white tie, or as formal in contrast to the most formal of white tie. Once more common, white tie dress coat is now fairly rare, being reserved for only extremely formal occasions. Black tie is traditionally worn only after 6 o'clock in the evening, or after sundown during winter months. Black tie's rough daytime equivalent is the stroller, which is less formal than morning dress because it replaces the tailcoat with a lounge coat. Curiously, in opposition to the trend seen in evening dress, the less formal stroller is now extraordinarily rare, whereas morning dress is still relatively common. When the dress code for an event starting at or after 6 o'clock in the evening is described as formal with no further qualification, the invitee may choose to wear either black tie or a dark lounge suit with a tie. Traditionally. Black tie should be worn to the opera although a dark clown suit is also now acceptable. In the 21st century, many opera houses in the English-speaking world do not stipulate black tie. For example, neither the Royal Opera House nor the Sydney Opera House have a black tie dress code. Black tie is customary at English country house opera, such as during the summer festival at Glyndebourne. Black tie should also be worn at a ballet or orchestra gala. At formal dinners on cruise ships the dress code will typically be black tie although a dark lounge suit may be worn as a substitute. In 2013 Cunard, noted for its adherence to formal dress codes, relaxed its dress standards. Cunard requires one of a dinner jacket, a dark suit, formal national dress or military uniform for gentlemen diners on formal evenings. Similarly, the luxury cruise liner, Seaborne, stipulates either a tuxedo or a dark business suit on formal evenings. Some university debating societies, such as at Oxford and Durham conduct at least some of their debates in black tie. Learn societies, such as the Royal Aeronautical Society, may also follow a similar practice. In the last few decades, in place of the traditional white tie or morning dress, black tie has been increasingly seen in the United States at formal day wedding. However, etiquette and clothing experts continue to discourage or condemn the wearing of black tie as too formal for weddings or any event before 7 p.m., such as by Emily Post and Amy Vanderbilt, the latter arguing that no man should ever be caught in a church in a tuxedo. In the United Kingdom and the rest of Europe, although a minority accepts black tie at evening receptions, including some Jewish weddings, it is seldom worn at church weddings or civil ceremonies where instead white tie, morning dress or lounge suit is normally favored. In some places, local variations of white tie etiquette may traditionally be worn such as Highland dress in Scotland. For a formal dining, 
Uniformed services officers and non-commissioned officers often wear mess dress equivalents to the civilian black tie and evening dress. Mess uniforms may vary according to the wearer's respective branches of the armed services, regiments, or corps, but usually include a short eaten style coat reaching to the waist. Some include white shirts, black bow ties, and low-cut waistcoats, while others feature high collars that fasten around the neck and corresponding high gorge waistcoats. Some nations' armed services have black tie and white tie equivalent variants in their mess dress. In tropical areas, primarily in Western diplomatic and expatriate communities, red sea rig is sometimes worn, in which the jacket and waistcoat are omitted and a red cummerbund and trousers with red piping are worn instead. Scottish Highland dress is often worn to black and white tie occasions, especially at Scottish Reels and Cayleys. The black tie version is more common, even at white tie occasions. Traditionally, black tie Scots Highland dress comprises. Traditional black tie Lowland dress is a variant of the normal black tie that includes tartan trues rather than the usual trousers and may include a suitable kilt jacket instead of the dinner jacket. Trues are often worn in summer in warm climes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.